Hi there and welcome back to Jody Journals. My name is Jody and on this channel we do all sorts of arts and crafts as well as a good amount of gardening. So if that's something that you're interested in, please stick around. And today we are making a rag rug out of old socks. So I have an extensive sock collection that I have gathered through the years and I have run out of room. So I decided to recycle some of my colorful old socks into a new rug. I'm showing you the supplies that uh, you would need for this project. You don't necessarily need these exact supplies, but something similar would suffice. One, you need a whole bunch of socks. Uh, two, you need a safe place to do the cutting. I have my cutting mat and something to cut the socks. So um, I'm using a cutting wheel that just um, works really easily. Or you can use shears. I showed you my sewing shears as well or any pair of scissors sharp enough to cut through socks. What you're gonna do is start off by cutting your socks into bands. And these little bands, we are going to weave together to make a rope that will eventually become the rug. So I'm showing you a couple different types of socks and how I cut them. And then once you stretch each band out, they'll sort of curl up on themselves and get a little more rope-like, and that's what you're looking for. One of my goals this year was to become more sustainable and well it's one of my goals every year um, but this year it was to do better at recycling and reusing and um, trying to get projects done for free instead of having to buy new things so I'm gonna try and use every piece of these socks that I possibly can um, and you'll see how I use you know the length of the sock but I do cut out the heel and I cut out the toe and um, that's just because I can get more even loops cut out of the sock um, as it turns across the heel <laughs> so there's very little waste at the end and if you don't want to have any waste you can hang on to the sock scraps and use it to stuff something down the line like say you make a stuffed animal or something um, so I personally didn't hang on to the scraps, um, I did toss them, <laughs> but you can hang on to them and use them for other projects. I also wanted to demonstrate here the different types of socks I used for the project. So I used everything from novelty socks to athletic socks and even, uh, some knit socks. I wouldn't go for straight wool socks unless there's any elastic in it. You do need some stretch to the loops for them to be effective at holding their shape when it comes time to weave them together. So now that you see the technique for cutting up your socks, we can move on to the next steps.
two hours later. I did this project over the course of several days. So the first day I just sat on the floor and cut up all my socks and then I scooped them all into a bag for using the next day when I started the weaving process. Um, we were talking about supplies earlier and one of the supplies you do need is lots of time. Um, take your time with this project, go slow. It will get done eventually. Next, I'm gonna show you guys how to start the weaving process. And you don't need anything but your hands for this. I ended up getting very sore hands, so I switched to a tool later on. But I wanted to show you how to cast on. You start by wrapping one of your loops um, on your pointer finger, and then you want to cross it over and then wrap around your ring finger, cross it over one more time, and go straight across both fingers. So in the middle, or the bottom piece, you'll have an X, and the top piece will be an O. The next piece you put on top, and you just make two O's, no need to cross in the middle. You will pull the most bottom part up and over, and the other side up and over, and then you will scoot the whole thing down on your fingers and add a third loop. The third loop will go across and across again, two O's, and you will pull all three pieces of these socks up and over. This is the only time in the weaving that you will have three pieces on uh, your fingers at a time, but that's just so that the bottom loop doesn't slip out so that it's actually cast on to both the second and third loop. Then from there it's a rather simple process. You twist it over twice, two O's, and then you pull the edges up and over. And you keep going like this until you run out of all of your loops. So I had mentioned earlier that my hands started to hurt in the weaving process and if you are similar to me and your hands can't take that much uh, weaving, then find something similar to this. This is just a wall hook that happened to be the right distance apart on its two prongs, but you could literally use anything. Uh, two nails in a board would work good. Um, I don't know, anything else similar to that. Chopsticks maybe would work really good. Something along that those lines. So take a look around your house. See if you have anything similar to this. I just happen to have this hook that ended up working really well for this. Here's a peek at my day one progress. Like I said, I spread this process out over quite a few days. Um, I think it took me about four days total, working between two and four hours each day. So this is a very time consuming project. 
but something is so sweet about finishing a project like this. You get really excited to see what you made, what all that time did. So this is day two and um, I'm continuing to weave on the hook. I just ended up throwing it back in the bag, hook and all, and pulled it right back out the next day. One eternity later. Okay, last loop. You weave it on as you would normally. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull one side over to the other. And then you're gonna pull the bottom over the top or the top over the bottom. Basically, you just want it to loop through itself so it won't come unthreaded. Um, once I have it off there, you'll see me tighten it up. And it's kind of like a little slip knot. Uh, so you just put one end through the other and pull it tight and it should stay just like that. And that is the end of my rope. You'll see a clip of how long this thing is. It reached from one end of my home to the other. Now is the point where you want to decide what shape you want your rug to be. You can do an oval rug or a round rug. Um, it just depends on how you start it. If you want a round rug, you will be tucking the rope in on itself and around and around like a snail shell. And if you want an oval rug, then what you're going to do is start by sewing it back on itself in a line and then continue wrapping around from there. As far as sewing materials go, I just used a regular sewing needle and some thread. Um, I think maybe an embroidery thread or a curved needle would work better. Um, I just had regular thread on hand. An embroidery thread and needle tend to be a bit thicker, so it would probably be stronger to hold. But by the time I'm done sewing each spiral to the next, it ends up being quite sturdy. So use what you have on hand. I'm sure it'll work just fine. I chose to do an oval shape, so I folded about six to eight inches back on itself, and I am sewing the inner edges that are touching together. And then um, after that, I loop the, the rope around, taking care uh, to keep it straight. Um, you'll see that it actually has four sides to it due to the weaving technique. So you want to sort of keep the side even and, and keep it unrolled and match it back on itself.
After you have finished sewing that first little stretch, uh, go ahead and tie off your thread and then you want to sort of manipulate the rope to sort of pinch back on itself. That first run, it'll try to sort of unfold a little bit. So you want to manipulate the socks to sit closer together before you do the second spiral run. So here I am sort of massaging it back into place and making sure that the rope stays straight. You'll see a quick little progress shot, and then I will show you how I finished up the sewing portion of the project. much, much, much later. By this point, I feel like I have re-threaded my needle a hundred thousand million quadrillion times and um, tied a knot at the end of my thread a thousand quadrillion times as well. But I wanted to show you the last uh, few stitches that I do to hold this in securely. Uh, so I start by threading in and sewing along the inner edges here. And when I get to the end, I make sure to catch that last loop and sew it very, very securely on to the side of the rug so that it doesn't come unraveled. The reason I went with the last loop as the last part of the rug is down the line if I want a bigger rug and I somehow come into the possession of a lot more socks <laughs> that I want to recycle then I can actually um, unsew the end and keep weaving onto this uh, rope and then my rug can get bigger and bigger as the years go on so if you're careful about how you sew this, then you can add loops on as, as life goes on, I guess. So this is one of those projects that doesn't ever actually have to end if you don't want it to.
Well, this is the end of the sock rug for now and a quick close-up of how it turned out. The bottom side you can see has stitches all over the place, um, spiraling out from the center and holding each edge together. And the top side looks a little bit more organized. Um, I think it's so beautiful. I had so much fun making this rug and it currently lives in front of my dryer. So my feet have something squishy to stand on while I'm doing laundry. I appreciate you being here. If you want to follow me on more of my arts and crafts endeavors and garden endeavors, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and put a comment below. I'll see you next time. Bye.